friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india let us observe this surgery the patient has come with high intraocular pressure intraocular pressure is 50 mm of mercury this is a hypermature morganian cataract and in my opinion the case is going towards fecolytic glaucoma i have taken up this case for surgery with medications to reduce intraocular pressure intraocular pressure came down to 30 mm of mercury and i have taken up the case for surgery after making the incisions the anterior capsule has been stained with tripe and blue dye and now the anterior capsule is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose cornea is not very clear and we have a hazy view of the anterior chamber i am applying a pupil expansion device this is b hex pupil expander the anterior chamber is shallow one flange is stuck under the iris lot of tripe and blue dye was under the iris and now they are coming out then this flange which is directed towards 4 o'clock is tucked and now one more flange which is at 12:30 o'clock is approached through the incision at 8 o'clock and it is stuck people takes a hexagonal shape and the capsule is punctured and milky fluid comes out as i try to do a small rexis i find the jonule is weak so i have decided to give equatorial support to the capsula bag i have already asked for a capsula tension ring i have spread some milky fluid inject visco and now i'm going to enlarge the rexis i don't want to make a very large rexis i just want to make the rexis about 4.5 mm because if this rexis goes into the jonul it will be impossible to retrieve because the jonul is weak So I made a large, a small rexis. Size of the rexis is about four millimeter. This is difficult to manage the nucleus with small nucleus, but since this is this case has weak jonul, I didn't want to do a large rexis. I inject visco, and I find that there is a place where I can. and large the rexis a bit before that i apply a capsular tension ring it goes through the main wound leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and now the trailing end is held with macpherson's forceps through the side port a uh, sensory hook goes into the anterior chamber 
The prong of the Sinski hook goes into the opening in the eyelet of the trailing end and it is placed in the capsular bag. And now I make a small cut here at around 9 o'clock and enlarge the rexis little bit. So the rexis which was about 4 millimeter is now about 4.5 millimeter. And now the FECO needle is introduced. My plan is to do direct chop just want to hold the nucleus and chop it into small fragments so that the fragments can come out through these small rexes. Yes, whenever the rexis is small, chop into smaller fragments than if the rexis was little larger about 5 millimeter or 5.25 millimeter. Small rexes we have to make small pieces bring out the pieces out of the bag and emulsify the pieces. Ultrasonic energy used in this case is 75 percent in continuous mode. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and this setting is from the very beginning and now as I have mentioned the zonule is very weak and for that I have placed a CTR still the posterior capsule does not have any vertical support and the posterior capsule is moving up and down, it is trampolining. So whenever this happens, the best thing to do is emulsify the last piece after implanting the intraocular lens that is the IOL scaffold technique. I tilt this nucleus, get a space to introduce the lens, enlarge the lens, enlarge the incision little bit inject some visco and this is the stereocoaxial elimination of Lumera T microscope and here goes the intraocular lens. The trailing haptic has gone into the capsular bag and now over the lens we can safely emulsify the last piece. Same ultrasonic energy about 64. 5 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Now whenever the lens is there, CTR is there, it is difficult to remove the cortex thoroughly. Still, if we be diligent, if we be meticulous, if we give time, it is possible to do a thorough cleaning of the cortex. Tangential pull and then remove the cortex. This is a 23 gauze Simco and it is doing a nice job of cortical cleanup.
the simco goes behind the lens and removes all the visco and now we have to inject visco again to remove the b hex but this visco visco is remaining in the anterior chamber it has not gone behind the intraocular lens or very little of it has gone behind the lens so now again anterior chamber lavage with this 23 gauze simco cannula and now a small sphincterotomy so that retina can be visualized well whenever we want to assess the retina people are oh, very small i just made a small cut at the pupillary margin injected some trims nolan acetate to see if there is any vitreous strands in the anterior chamber but i was sure it is not there and now we are towards the end of the surgery friends it is not easy to do sics in such cases you cannot do a large rexis in such cases with weak jonial it's very difficult to do uh, optimum size rexis for delivery of the nucleus so in weak jonial small people this combination feco to me appears a safer option provided you have good experience of fecal emulsification and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy, and great surgical competence.